Right, so it's Lent, um, and this year I have given up, or I am giving up, um, enjoying nutrition is what I've gone with. So it's important that whatever I do for Lent be an abstinence, that is, I am stopping myself from doing something that I would normally be doing. Um, and normally I would be choosing what food and drink I get to have. Um, and so now I'm not going to get to choose what food and drink I have. Instead, I will have only what I need to have, which means for food, I have invested in huel, well, um, and for drink, I will only be allowed to have tap water um, or whatever still water is available wherever I am. Um, so, the way I currently work is I only eat once a day, uh, which I think is probably going to be a significant challenge for Huel. Um, we'll find out today if it is. And uh, so we'll, we'll, see, we'll see how well that works. For water, obviously, you need water as and when you need it. So, you know, that will just be wherever I am, whenever I am, I will have water. Um, now, I, I did previously, so um, Lent's like this. I have previously gone vegan for Lent, um, which was fine. Uh, we, I discovered that vegan food is tastier than vegetarian food. Uh, I think vegans put more effort into making their food tasty, maybe. I don't know. And... Um, I have previously given up drinking things that were not water. Um, and that's when I discovered that actually Spanish tap water, quite nice. Um, it's, it's like a sweetness to it or something like that. I don't think that, uh, certainly Basil and tap water, potentially London tap water, I don't know. I don't think they're going to be as tasty. Um, I, I, I keep seeing reports from people all over the country telling me that the rest of the country has much better tap water. Um, so we'll see how that goes, but either way, I, I won't be able to have anything I would prefer to have. Uh, so last night, um, I, I binged, I ate many pancakes, many donuts, big old bag of corn chips, um, three pints of elderflower water in the space of an hour in that, in, in the last, well, in the space of two hours in the last hour. What I'm saying is that currently, um... My digestive system is a mess because I ate terrible things last night. So from a scientific standpoint, we will not know how the Huel is affecting me, uh, probably for a few days at least, while we get rid of whatever I've done to myself over the past three days. Um, possibly more. Yeah, the past few days, I've not been eating well. I have been eating for pleasure um, and I have gained about two kilos in that time. So, anyway, let's get to Huel. Uh, so, I ordered what I assume will be 46 days worth of Huel, um, but I multiplied 46 by um, 1,500 on the assumption that 1,500 cal calories is what I will need in a day. We'll find out if that holds out. Um, and I ended up with a big old box arriving uh, at the office um, with 10 of these bags of Huel. One of these official Huel shakers and what I spent a long time looking for yesterday was two of these scoops um, which I had of course put inside the shaker so that I would remember where they were. Um, the other one is now back in the box with the rest of the bags here which I don't keep around the house because um, it'll annoy people. And it also comes with a t-shirt, so I suppose I should put that on. Hang on a second. And there we go, I am now on brand. I'm not gonna say this is a great t-shirt, it's pretty thin. Um, and I, I, I try my best not to wear black, um, so this isn't going great for me. Um, I should point out I am in my, my dad's kitchen. Um, you'll notice we have here eggs. I think we've got some beans soaking over there. Uh, behind this plate, 
Uh, we have some pork shoulder steaks. Um, there's some chocolate chip cookies over there, some bonbon booms, if you know your way around um, Colombian sweets. Uh, there's a bowl of mandarins over there. All things I, I, I won't be able to eat for the next 46 days. Uh, but anyway, to the good stuff, I say. Um, right, so, I've never had Huel, for, or Huel before. This is going to be completely new with a bit, now, okay, with a bit of luck, it's going to be somewhat tasty. Um, this is the unflavored and unsweetened Huel, but importantly, it is nutritionally complete food. So the website and people on it assure me that it is possible um, to, and, and some might say even actually beneficial, to eat only Huel. They are very insistent that you should not immediately switch to a pure Huel diet. Do not do this. According to their website, they, they, they are very, very insistent that you should that you should switch over gradually. But being that I was already on eating one meal a day, um, I'm hoping that I'm not going to ruin myself too much. In all likelihood, I am at the very least going to be extremely farty. Um, so, what is in Huel? In Huel are oats, and that is the only thing that is in in bold for people with allergies. Um, although it may contain mustard. Um, we have pea protein, flax seeds, brown rice protein, MCT powder from coconut, uh, sunflower oil powder, micronutrient blend, thickeners, which are xanthan gum and guar gum. Um, out of those, I should be all right with all of that, I think. Um, the only thing that I can think of that I potentially might not like is coconut, but we're going to have to get on with that. Um, the micronutrient blend, in case you're wondering, includes potassium chloride, coconut flour, calcium carbonate, vitamin C, L-choline bitartrate, lutein, plant-based vitamin D3, lycopene, vitamin E as D-alpha-tocopherol acetate, niacin as niacinamide, vitamin K2 as MK7, vitamin A as retinol acetate, vitamin D2, pantothenic acid, as calcium D-pantothenate, vitamin B6 as pyridoxine hydrochloride, riboflavin, vitamin K1, chromium chloride, potassium iodide, L-methylfolate calcium, biotin, vitamin B12 as cyano, oops, cyanocobalamin. So, you know, that, that I'm sure is all very good for me. Um, looking down the, um, the vitamin and minerals list on the side, everything on there, assuming that you do um, apparently 98 grams times five per day, this says 123 grams times four or 98 grams times five. I'm not gonna quite do that. Um, I think I'm gonna be short on that. Anyway, if I were to do that much, I would get at least 100% of many vitamins and far more than 100% of some other vitamins so, um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. The, the rule with Lent is always, if I feel like I'm making a danger to myself, then I will stop or I will do something different. So in this case, if I notice that things are starting to go downhill for me health-wise, um, then I will initially increase my dosage. Obviously, 1,500 calories is quite low, but I'm not a big person. Um, I may look like a big person at the moment, but that's because I'm breaking in some heels because you can't go into a party with heels that you've never worn before. That's just silly. Um, so yeah, I'm not a big person. I'm also a very lazy person. So I don't, in theory, need that many calories. Um, and as I said, I've just put on a lot of weight. So um, let's try and get rid of that, shall we? You know, I, 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 I may be suffering, but maybe I can get some benefit out of it. Uh, we'll see how this goes. So, uh, hopefully my, my friends and family will let me know if I am looking um, haggard in, in the next few weeks. Uh, right, so let's, let's open this up. We have what appears to be a perforated edge and then a resealable bag going on. I should mention that normally I would um, use, what would I use? Normally I would set up a, a nice microphone so this sounds good. I'm trusting my phone at the moment. We'll see how this goes. 
So, there we go. So apparently the inside seal doesn't work great. Um, that's dust everywhere. Uh, okay, that is a bag of powder. That smells kind of like porridge going on there, maybe. I don't know if we see in there, probably not, but oh, actually. Oh no, I'm not gonna turn on that, it'd be ridiculous. You, you as the viewer, as the camera, are currently inside the stove. Um, so I could turn on a light, but that will turn on the extractor fan, so let's not do that. But anyway, hopefully, you can see somewhat inside there, that is just a, a bag of powder. You know, that's, that is what a bag of powder looks like. It is very beige. Uh, now, importantly, when I make this, um, I will be making it with water, not with milk. So the, the idea with fuel is that you are supposed to mix it up. You are supposed to put in, you know, put in some milk or something like that to make it creamier. You put some fruit in there to make it more palatable. That kind of thing. What you're not supposed to necessarily do is replace your entire diet with unflavored and unsweetened fuel, which is what I'm going to do. So what should have come in the, in the box of fuel and did not come in the box of fuel, um, was a, a how to use guide. Luckily, if you Google fuel how to use, then um, they have the guide there, or they have some sort of guide on there. Uh, so I have looked that up, worked out what I need to do, and apparently I need something like, um, I think three scoops. It's a little over three scoops. <coughs> <coughs> to get 125 grams. And 125 grams gives me about 500 calories. And what I need to do is uh, put in, I think the way it said to do it, was do 400 milliliters of water, add in the powder, shake, 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 and then another 200 milliliters of water. So that gives you about a pint, and that is 500 calories. So I'm gonna need to have three pints of fuel. Um, so yeah, that's that's gonna be great. Uh, oh, while I'm here, there's a little thing in here which says, call inside the haltige getranke bitter for the schließen des shakers mit einem Löffel asquillen für die dalhafte brillante haltbarkeit eins drucks auf dem shaker empfehlen Wir die Reinigung der Shakers von Hand. Something about shakers, spoons, and presumably hand. Um, let's see, please stir carbonated beverages with a spoon before closing the shaker bottle. If you have a printing on your shaker bottle, we recommend to clean the shaker bottle regularly by hand. I'm not saying that Huel don't make this themselves, but this feels like it was done generically by somebody else because here's your printing on the side. So I'm gonna have to clean this by hand. Now, it's the first time I've used it, so I will clean it now by hand. Now, sensible people will probably tell you that you should use soap for this. However, sensible people are not nearly as lazy as me. I'll make a mess everywhere. Okay, right, so today I will be using this crappy old scale, which I'm pretty sure is my old scale from my uni days, like original uni days, not second or third uni days, uh, or fourth. Um, so its ability to actually accurately measure out 125 grams, I'm not so certain of, but let's see what happens. Okay, so, in theory, I need, oh wait, no, that's what I need to do. I need to do first my 400 milliliters. So, this obviously has convenient uh, markers on it to tell me when I hit 400. So, 
There we go, that's about 400. Am I actually recording? I am actually recording. Okay. Right, so there's 400. So now, I'll put this one here. That's saying 400 grams. So hopefully that's about right. Cause you know, 400 milliliters of water plus a cup. Now it was already slightly below cause I've been measuring the cup earlier. So hopefully that means we're pretty accurate. Okay, now, there we go. I now need 125. So I'm gonna go up to the fifth line here. Right now, I say this should be a skosh over. It should be a skosh over three scoops. So oh, that's me about to die. This is why you need to break in your heels. Okay. is looking like the beginning of some boring dough. Okay, we're about 100 grams there. So let's give it a scotch more. Uh, sweet, a bit more. Let's give it one unbroken lump in there. Uh, and a little bit more. Okay, there's my 125. So, we take this thing, put this thing on here, this on here. Cover it up. Then we apparently shake for 10 seconds. So, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi, six Mississippi, seven Mississippi. Mississippi, nine Mississippi, and ten Mississippi. Okay, that that is going to make it very difficult to work out what adding two hundred milliliters looks like, but it does now look like it's a cohesive mess. Oh, hello. There we go. There we go. I think we're starting to get an actual idea what that is. Okay, so it's now up to five hundred milliliters. So. Let's take it up to 700. Can I just top it up through there? Let's hope I can just top it up through there. So, uh, where is the 700 milliliter mark? Uh, there, there is. I now can't read, obviously, the markers on there because they're covered in uh, fuel. And then we give it another shake just to make sure that's all good and incorporated. I've not just got a load of water up the top. Whew. Okay. Right. Now, I mean, so this has the spout on the top which presumably is for drinking out of, but then you've got the, the grate on the inside, which potentially would stop things. I don't know what happened, but no, that's fine. Let's, let's try going, you know, full gym rat and trying to drink it directly from this thing. Now, of course, the, the problem with that is that I've now got a mess of fuel there, so that's probably gonna be all, all over my face. So let's try and Oh God, that's bland. Also very liquid. Yeah. 
I am not going to be pooping well. Yeah, that, that is that is what drinking seeds taste like. That's Oh. Yeah, that could definitely do with some salt and or sugar. Uh, how much salt is in this? Oh, that's not a lot of salt. So keep in mind that I am going under the normal allowance. Um, I, I'm actually going to, I think... Yeah, so if you were to do the standard amount of this, you will get your... The thing that is... Yeah, you get 62% of your salt. Now, you... Okay, so let's have a look at this. So you get 100% of your energy if you were to use 2,000 calories worth. And that includes 94% of your fat, of which saturates 61%, which is good. You, you want lots of saturates in there. Um, of your carbohydrate, you get 68%. So there's going to be lots of people who are all fantastic you know, low carb, and of which sugar's 6%. So, you know, once again, people that are into that sort of thing will love that. Uh, the fiber is 132%, so you're going to get a decent amount of fiber, and actually with the amount I've got, I will be getting enough fiber. And then protein, 296%. So, huge quantities of protein, more than enough protein. Salt is only 62%, and of course, as we all well know, um, you need salt in your diet. Your diet, you know, it has to have salt in it. Salt is easily one of the most important nutrients in your diet. It is the thing that makes your nerves work, um, which is to say everything. There is no point having all of your body if the salt is not there to, to make everything function. Having not enough salt is far, far worse than having too much water, uh, too much salt. Um, so, if I start getting headaches or and things like that, then I will, I will see what I can do about adding salt into my diet. Potentially, I'll have to have mildly salty tap water, um, or maybe I'll allow myself hula hoops. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I imagine in the future I will pass the time by watching YouTube videos or by listening to music or something like that. However, being that I'm using my phone to record this, I'm not doing that. Oh, God, that is nowhere near halfway done. This is only the first cut. Okay. Almost halfway done. <clears throat> Interestingly, tomorrow and the day after, I will actually have a full day's work to do, which is very unusual for me. But that does mean I'm going to have to work out how to make this at work. Um, hopefully there'll be a lunch break because, you know, <sighs> okay. Oh, yes. They're lumpy. They recommend that at the very least, you put some ice cubes in here and or leave it in the fridge. Um, apparently it is better colder, as with, with so many drinks. Um, I'm not doing that because once again, I am not allowed to enjoy this. Um, I'm not saying it's it's disgusting or anything. It is just bland. There's, yeah. Oh.
Oh, okay. This is this is already getting difficult. I mean, it's effectively cereal, so maybe this would be easier if I were to pour it into a bowl and eat it with a spoon. But I feel like I'd probably need it to be thicker. And I am, um, I have, a, well, initially I have committed myself to making it as suggested, which means that this is going to be the consistency. Um, should liquid poop become a massive problem, then maybe I will, I will change that policy. We'll see how it goes. Um, I mean, hopefully, I'm not a biologist, so I don't understand these things, but hopefully the liquidness of it means that actually I'll be less farty than you would expect because it'll spend less time um, getting eaten by bacteria and so on and so forth. Um, that seems like an unlikely thing. <coughs> oh. Yeah, no, this is only getting worse before it gets better. Oh. I'm saying there's 46 days of this. Um, for people that are uninitiated on these things, um, although you may think that uh, Lent is 40 days, that's because most people, well, they probably don't realise it, uh, the way you're supposed to do Lent is 40 days, but not the Sundays. Um, so you have to add on six days to account for those Sundays. Um, whereas my reasoning is that Jesus probably did not leave the desert every seven days um, and just eat whatever he wanted to and then go back in and get back on them locusts and carob. Um now, I don't do this for religious reasons. Um, if anything, I do it to um, keep religious people on their toes and, and ask them, how religious are they really? If I can do this just out of spite and perverse pleasure. Uh, so. about it now um so you may be aware that for the past couple of years my my mum was suffering from cancer she's now passed away um but in those last few months a massive portion of her diet was either complans or scandy shakes um which were very similar to this in fact we've got the oh, oh hello that almost went wrong again uh. We, in fact, have the Nutricia shaker that we used for um, for the Scandi shakes here, which is a very similar thing, it's slightly smaller. Um, but yeah, so, as ever, as, as happens with all of these lengths, um, what I am doing is not something that is that unusual. Um, so obviously, as I say, there, there are plenty of people who claim to subsist on a 100% fuel diet. Um, they do that because they want to, because they enjoy it, because they want to remove decisions from their lives, that kind of thing. <sighs> because they like being very anal about their nutrition um, and knowing exactly what's going into their body, so on and so forth. Um, and there are people that have to have these kinds of diets um, through no choice of their own, either because they have eating disorders and that kind of thing, and therefore, once they have to um, be on the kind uh, on kind of some sort of sort of supplement that is going to be quite similar to this, or because yeah. Um, or because they, they just don't, can't afford anything else. Um, and therefore they have to just subsist on 
or cereals and that kind of thing, you know. Um, and you'll see that, you'll see, you know, there's, there's people all over the world with their entire diet is effectively rice or there's yucca or something like that, you know, whatever they can get hold of in, um, often in, in sort of big bulk bags that will last them a while, that kind of thing. Um, so at the very least, just as boring, but obviously the difference for most of them is that they can um, add some flavour to it. Um, precedent for not being allowed to add flavour, for me at least, is when I had mumps, because mumps is the disease that makes flavour hurt. So if you've ever had mumps, you will be aware that as soon as any salt gets anywhere near your mouth, it is very painful. Um, so once again, none of this is impossible or radical or anything like that. It is just annoying for me. Um, and I think that that is one of the benefits that I get from doing Lent is is knowing that whatever I do that is difficult, I can do it. You know, I've I've had worse things that I've done, um, or equally tricky things that I've done. You know, if I was able to, whatever it is that I have, uh, that, that, that that I've done before, then I'll be able to do whatever it is that I am dreading doing in any given moment. So here we're going into cup two. Now you may wonder why I am trying to be so exact with this. It's because if I can manage to hold on to the uh, 1,500 calories a day, then that means that I will completely run through my fuel supply and not be left with anything at the end. Um, and not run out at the end either. Whereas, if I need to do more, then I am going to have to order another bag, which is fine because actually they do get you a new one within one or two days. So if I can see that I am running out, then that won't be a massive problem. It'd just be annoying. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi. Five Mississippi, six Mississippi, seven Mississippi, eight Mississippi, nine Mississippi, and ten Mississippi. Now shaking is important because as, as I've learned from that first one, I have got some clumps of fuel there. Like not massive amounts by any means, but um I need to minimize that. In fact, I'm gonna Let's see if that helps. Back down again. Whew. Okay. Round two. Of three. Of 46 heats. Okay. I mean, if you think about it, just drinking three pints of anything in short succession is unpleasant. Um, you may think, oh, I do that all the time with booze, but booze is a diuretic and makes you wee, so it flushes itself all out. You should be aware of this. I don't drink. I, I, I'm not aware of this. Um, whereas this is not a diuretic that I'm aware of. Um, so the only reason that I'm going to be peeing a lot is because come, well, 11 o'clock tomorrow morning, when I've not eaten anything for 24 hours, then any water that goes into my system is just going to go whoosh, straight through. Uh, so that's going to be a lot of tap water to keep myself hydrated. Um, You may be aware that I would like a career in, in voiceover work. 
and for a career in voiceover work, you need to maintain yourself hydrated at all times. Um, otherwise, you get lip smacking, so, uh, which is really annoying. So if you've ever listened to the Jeremy Vine show, when he gets that doctor on, that he always gets on, that's what lip smacky sounds like. It's torture for anyone that's used to working with voices um, in a studio. Uh, you would think somebody would have told her by now to, you know, eat an apple, but apparently not. So there we go. I'm not sure if I covered this already, but um, I had been saying about how this was, you know, these, these things have to be an abstinence. And there's a case to be made that this is a positive obligation as opposed to an abstinence, um, which is kind of true, except I do have to eat at some point. I will need to have food at some point. So I still consider this an abstinence in that I'm not going to be able to just have the food that I want to have and I will at some point in any given day, have to subject myself to this. And, um, yeah, that the plan is to do it roughly at lunchtime every day, um, and that way we just keep it consistent. Um, I'm, I'm not going to put it down to a specific time, just in case, you know, I'm doing something, something like that, um, once again, it can't be, as best I can, or can make it, it can't be a, a positive obligation. It has to be an abstinence. Uh, it's still feeling a bit lumpy. Now I realize that shaking more than the requisite 10 seconds may be considered uh, altering the recipe, but if all of the lumps end up getting washed out into the sink, then that means that I'm not actually getting the nutrition I need. So, and I'm already not getting enough because I've gone for 1,500. Um, for anybody wondering, the 46 day course has cost me about 200 pounds, um, which seems like a lot of money, but when you break it down, that's less than a five a day. Um, and considering how much I spend on food outside, actually, that's almost certainly much cheaper than what I normally do. Uh, now, were I to actually cook for myself, um, and potentially I could get that down further, but yeah, there we go. It's almost halfway. <sighs> In case you're wondering, yes, my feet do hurt. Um, not only am I wearing heels, but they are a bit too small for me because apparently lady shoes come in small sizes. Who knew? But I have had them stretched up down at Timpsons, though that is, an, that is a, a service that Timpsons offers and I'm guessing all half decent cobblers offer. Um, so they just spend a week putting it in a machine that stretches it out. Um, it's not helped that much, but there we go. That's much of what I'm doing here as well is a bit more stretching is getting the, the muscles in my feet used to being in this position, um, and used to being crumpled. Um, so there you go. So for anybody wondering, the best before date on this cure is January 2020. Um, <coughs> being that it's currently March, which of uh, 2019, I'll let you work out being that this is the first day of Lent, 
um, what the exact date is. Um, also, if you're watching this on the day it's uploaded, assuming that I uploaded it on the right day, then you can work it out. Um, but yeah, so should you get this for yourself, um, the shelf life on it will apparently be about a year. Ugh. Although that is the best before date, so you know, maybe, maybe it's still fine afterwards. I forgot I was on brand. It was, oh. How long is this taking? Oh, oh God. Oh. It's 45 minutes in. Oh. Okay. Let's try and keep this under an hour, shall we? I've got icky thumps sticking my, stuck in my head. Other things you can do with fuel are, of course, to put them into other foods, you know, bake them into, into pies and brownies and things like that, but basically just treat it like weed. Um, presumably don't smoke it. Um, I'm not sure how much nutrition you can get from inhaling burnt fuel. I do kind of need the toilet, presumably that's more to do with last night than this. Considering that I'm getting like one and a half litres of water, or even more, because of maths, whenever I do this, potentially I don't even need to drink that much. Although, I think the fuel website does recommend that you stay extremely hydrated. So, I may have to. Oh. You know, there was this hope that actually I'd be like, oh, this is actually quite tasty. I might enjoy this. It's not. It's drinkable. It's, there's not, nothing like actively making me gag or anything apart from, you know, the excess biomass in my gut. Uh, the worst bit is that when you eat too much, or when I eat too much, generally I will wash it down. But obviously, that that trick doesn't work here. <coughs> There's also another thing that I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to deal with if it comes up. But if I get ill, I don't know if I'm allowed to do medicines. Um, as ever, safety-wise, um, like, you know, if it's prescription medicine, fine. <coughs> Pills and the such. Well, I think like throat lozenges and things like that, probably not allowed. I was going to have to brave it. Also, recently, I've taken to carrying gum in the car, because um, apparently it is 
more difficult to fall asleep while chewing gum than it is to fall asleep while not chewing gum. And so if I'm driving and I'm worried that I might be starting to get tired, um, then I can chew some gum. Whereas now, if I'm worried that I might be starting to get tired, uh, then I'll, I'll have to just stop and sleep. Um, which I will do regardless if I am very tired. Uh, I will no longer have the gum option. You may have realised, if you don't know me already, I am not a person whose life you should emulate. I do not make sensible decisions. I am a silly man who does silly things. That may be why I stopped being a teacher. Uh, it's not. Something I forgot to mention. When I ordered this, I ordered 69,000 calories of Huel. So, hilarity. <sighs> okay. My hands, mate. You're about to shove them into a bag of powder. And you don't want it to become dough. I would be interested to see how well this works as just dough. Um, for making sort of pancakes and stuff, so... Maybe if I've got enough left over, I'll just make pancakes. Um, I mean, none of this says flour. It's got various things that you could make flour out of, but none of it actually is flour. <coughs> oh. So, this is one of the things, one of the reasons why you weigh it instead of um, doing a level scoop or whatever is because actually you can see there's, there's, there's holes in here. Um, so even if you have a level scoop, you don't know what the internal structure of this is. So should you be trying to be all sciencey about it, or if you're trying to bake with it, as you should always be doing when baking, you should be weighing, not eyeballing. I say this to knowing full well that whenever I bake, I do absolutely eyeball everything. Um, but then maybe that's why I'm not a great baker. Uh, we got to smudge more. I mean, people tell me that my brownies are very good, but you know, that's mostly because brownies, and it turns out huge quantities of chocolate and sugar are tasty. Who knew? I've gone a little bit over, but that's probably a good thing because I think we probably went a little bit under on the other ones. And finally, I can seal the bag. And up again. Do this properly. If only I had a sous vide machine. And by a sous vide machine, I mean the machine before the sous vide machine that takes all the air out of the bag. Yeah. So there we go. That was 1.72 kilograms of Huel. It is now. <coughs> Uh, 375 kilograms, 375 grams less. So we're now down to about a skosh under 1.4. Lovely, I'm gonna keep looking at this so that I don't have to try making that. <laughs> oh, okay. You know what? I'm going to change up my counting method. No reason to go all US centric on this and go to the Commonwealth. Go for one elephants, two elephants, three elephants, four elephants, five elephants, six elephants, seven elephants, eight 
elephants, nine elephants, ten elephants. In case I've not made it apparent, um, I'll probably show you. So, there is currently a painting of Huel um, liquid all over the sides of this. So what I need to for it to do is to drop down the sides enough, so at least in the light, I can see where the water line is, um, which you know, it should be, that should be enough now. <clears throat> I am quite full. Okay. I am, I do envisage a world in which I may have to do um, like a breakfast and then a lunch or something like that. <sighs> okay. Let's do this. Oops, sorry. <clears throat> okay, that's about it. Close again. Oh, it's so nice down there. <laughs> with, with my weight on my heels. Okay. <laughs> You know, a lot of the people that that have switched to a, to a, either a completely Huel or a largely Huel diet do say that they feel much better for it. It's apparently, you know, very good for 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 their their system. Uh, presumably, they did not get the unflavored, unsweetened version. Oh, okay. Of course, the, the other thing that is stopping me from just giving this all up is that I have now spent £200 on it. So I am rather invested. I am pot committed. <sighs> and I'm largely unemployed, so, you know, £200 is not to be sniffed at. I could have bought a far less uncomfortable 70s outfit for £200. Um, or far more uncomfortable. <coughs> I'm guessing the burpee is not so much because of the Huel as it is because of the huge quantities of liquid that I've been drinking. We're doing a nap after this. it on my phone. Oh. Huh. Apparently these scales are not legal for trade. Who knew? Hopefully after a while this will become sort of commonplace for my body. And by a while I mean like a few days. Um, my body will get used to this and just learn to accept 
the huge quantities of yawl that's going into uh, that are going into it in a short space of time. At the moment, it's pretty rough. That's also hopefully what's going to happen with regards to the inevitable fartiness that is presumably going to happen. That at some point, either my <clears throat> digestive system is going to get used to um, to digesting it properly um, and change how farty it gets, or it's going to be like <clears throat> when I gave off footwear for Lent and developed a bladder of steel so that I wouldn't have to walk into public toilets barefoot. And so now I'm just going to develop steel sphincters. Because, you know, there's multiple sphincters involved. Oh. As ever, not a biologist. <sighs> oh, hey, a bird of some sort. That's where you learn to identify birds. I apparently now have the King's Men version of Louis Louis stuck in my head. Weird. <clears throat> How this happens when I haven't been listening to any music. We don't know. Well, I don't think I've heard that song for a while. Like, Icky Thump. That's because I heard it this morning in the shower. Um, I think. Uh, I rarely listen to the King's Men version of Louis Louis. Why would you, when you can listen to the Richard Berry version? Because everything's better with doo-wop. Oh, God. Yeah, I might have to definitely consider the breakfast and lunch option. But at least once, let me do it all in the space of one meal, one sitting, even though I'm not sitting. Uh, get down a little bit. Maybe it'd be tasty if it was people. Mm. Oh. <clears throat> for anybody considering wearing heels that are too small for them, it turns out that taking weight off of the toes really helps. Huh. Should I end up vomiting everywhere, I will, I will try and make sure that I video that, you know, selfie style. Hold my hat back. Right. Come on, oh, home stretch. And do this. Oh, not quite the home stretch. <laughs> I 
cap off this. <sighs> I will not be making a video every day. I don't think. <coughs> oh. <coughs> okay, definitely gonna do breakfast and lunch instead. I mean, I'll finish this, because it's here now. Uh, let's just say my, let's move my diet from one meal a day to, to a 68. Oh. I say breakfast. Um, I'm liable to not be awake for breakfast. So, see how that goes. That's unpleasant. So, there we have it. I do not recommend having three servings of unflavoured, unsweetened Huel in one go. It's pretty horrible. I say the the powder itself seems like it would be a perfectly reasonable base for flavour. I am sure the, the various flavoured versions are probably actually quite nice by themselves. Um, the unflavoured unsweetened version, however, is just boring. I would appreciate not having to do that for another 45 days. There we go. Great stuff. Oh, now go to the toilet and then have a nap.